are back doing some Marvel Crisis Protocol models. I have not painted Marvel Crisis Protocol in a long time. Um, if you remember, we did a series on me painting Thanos here, which came out very nice. He is all done. Well, actually, he is not all done. I just saw a couple of places I'm going to touch him up real quick. Uh -oh. As I throw keys, throw things, and do what I normally do. Um, so we're back doing a little bit of this. I'm going to see how this goes. Um, this will be one of our shorter painting videos. Uh, sorry, guys. Just trying to get all my tools to trade. All right. Is that on my lens? Oh, I got to clean. Okay. Can I get a wipe down? All right, so we're gonna we're gonna just I just saw like one saw like one or two little spots on this guy. Always gotta get the wood cracked. All right. All right. It's amazing. Yeah, so I just saw a couple of things on the gauntlet. Um, but you can see how Thanos came out. I thought he came out real nice. Uh, do I think he came out real nice? I don't know why he's got, like, dust on him. It's kind of weird. Oh, there's, like, a lot of little... The yellow I have to paint. like a little there's a couple of little spots with um the yellow in particular that I just didn't oh I guess I have to redo some of the blue too I think that always happens though you find little like crevices and things that's the ultramarine blue oh do I not have that here oh that's right because I wasn't using it on anything huh interesting All right, so I may have to do some touch-ups on him, and I may have to do those later because I'm noticing that I don't have... Oh, wow. Yeah, there are a lot of little ones. Yeah, there's a lot of little touch-ups i got to do. So I take it back when I say that he's done. Yeah, this is something I've been fighting against with the yellow. That is the yellow, right? Yeah. This yellow is starting to starting to show its age. So I have to be careful as I'm painting with it because it uh Okay, that's why. I wonder why I perceive I have a lot more room. That's funny, because I didn't actually put this here. All right, I'm just gonna move my mic a little bit. Sorry, guys, I'm do I should have did all this moving around before I did my stream live, but. Hmm. Yeah, there's a little bit. Just some little tiny touch-ups that I'm just noticing. Nothing too earth-shattering. It's just getting that a little bit more together because I always say it all the time, but those little white spots are so detrimental. 
because if you see them, your model will always, it'll run the risk of not, um, not looking finished. And actually there's a few spots in here I might even want to go back over some of this with white. But I'll let you guys be the judge. I think he came out pretty darn good. For Thanos the Great Titan. What I'm going to be really working on, or what my intention to work on, was going to be more so the throne. Because the throne I haven't finished yet. No, I don't want Gilliman. So yeah, I want to get his throne going. And uh, first off, we got some of these little, um, we got some of these little skulls that we have to get in there. The problem with my skeleton horde. Is that it's starting to get you know I talked about this on one of my other streams my skeleton horde paint is starting to uh, when contrast paint starts to dry like dry out it basically gets really like gummy like that's what it's it's so you'll you'll start to get really darker tones so you're seeing that like skull is getting like really really patined versus what it's supposed to be which is more of like a wash it starts to get like really So I'm trying to just get the skulls painted. I got to go back in and touch up all of the rocks, get all that done the right way. And I'm playing on a few different comic tropes. For this, so I wanted to have like I wanted to have like one human skull on uh, on the throne itself. I think those skulls look really cool on there. Um, obviously, I'll do a little bit more work on the rock and, and such to get that a little bit better. I had painted this a while ago. It's sort of let... And not to say that Marvel Crisis Protocol got... Um, it got away from me a little bit, but it kind of did. Um... 
part of it had to do with COVID. COVID started to happen, and uh, I had originally, I was getting all this stuff ready for a series of possible events. Um, and then the, the ground sort of fell out from be beneath those events a little bit. So it became a little less of a priority to get these guys done and other things started to come to flourishing. So I had to start working on some other painting jobs. Um, so I'm, I'm finding my way back. And I said there was just a little bit left to do on this. So you know what? This is probably a good, well, for one of my quicker videos, probably a good video. Same thing with Rocket, like I hadn't finished Rocket, and then I can start doing some of the other models, because I have uh, Thanos' Generals, I have a few other models that I have not gotten everything done. Okay, so I decided to go that route with this. Okay. I remember when I was painting it originally, I was trying to figure out what color scheme I was going to do for the gray. So that's why it looks very uneven. So I think it was halfway through it. I was deciding if I was going to incorporate certain colors or not. I'm just going to darken this a little bit. Oops. So I just want to make this a little bit on the darker side. I'll also help. Because I think that's what I was trying to do. I don't know. It's one of the things I was kind of worried about by redoing, by repainting it was because I kind of forgot what colors I was using. So hopefully I don't colossally screw this up. And use the wrong color. I don't think I'm going to, but you never know. Because it started to look really cool, and I didn't want to, you know, lose what I had already started getting. You know, we talked about it on my uh on my streams many times the contrast is great but it's it's it gets a little weird when you're painting like the the terrain stuff because because obviously that it's it's it wants to go and pool so for flat surfaces, sometimes it gets a little wonky. I'm going to have to go back over that, but that'll be fine. And for my Thanos throne, I was going for... 
you know, more of the traditional, like, stone, metal type of throne, not, um, you know, in a lot of the more nor uh, normal, a lot of the more modern Thanos stories, his throne has become more gold in color. Sorry, I'm just fixing some of the pooling. Yeah, I don't, I don't think I used the charger gray there. I think I used the, uh, I think I used the, the other asphalt, and I might have just messed that up. That's okay. I'm actually pretty sure that I didn't use this. It could sometimes be hard because when it comes to even the space charger gray, um, depending on how I applied it, I you can apply it in a very light way. But I think I was using the... Um, I don't know what I was doing because I have a lot of the different grays on here. So like I said, this is the drawback to like doing this a while ago and then coming back to it because, and I'm, I'm a stickler. I always forget. Oh, geez. No, no, no. That's not. All right. So that's going to have to get, get a different gray. I don't know what gray I'm going to make that, but that's supposed to match that. And I totally forgot about that. But I think my intent, my original intention was to use a lighter gray for this part. But it has the texturing of the rock, so I, I kind of like using a different, a different gray. So I don't know. I don't know if I did the right thing, did the wrong thing. I mean, I guess I'll figure it out. Yeah, this is much darker than what I was using. I think I was using the. Um, Apothecary white. It looks like. I'm just gonna. Put like little divots in it, like it's rock. Um. We'll just have to rock it, go with it. But, uh, I mean, the chair has to stand out from the rest of it, so I'm I'm sort of happy that I I decided to go with a bolder color because it does. It can't be like light like the rocks. It has to have a different tone. And this will this will help to secure that because it'll look a lot darker and won't look as light, so it won't be matching the rocks, which is what you know. I incorporated the color that was on the rocks there, um, so this actually is a good move, and then. I will incorporate another color into uh, the other pieces of the chair. So we'll do some things. Nah. So I'm just going to make this mirror that by just overtoning it with this. So that now the whole chair is on the same page um, color wise. So we don't have any differences of opinion with uh, with what I'm going for here. I'm just gonna 
give this another once over coat so it can darken it up. It'll also help to even it out a little bit so it's not as uh, splotchy with uh, with brush marks. All right, perfect. Yeah, I'll go I'll go back over that with the other gray. And I think if I remember correctly what I was doing and I will continue to do it. And then you'll really start to see it come alive when I do this. But I was using the Space Charger uh, Gray, the Griffin Charger Gray, to bring some uh, detailing into the rocks so that the rocks started to look a little bit more alive. And you'll start to see. So I did it with the... I did it with the actual um, Space Wolf Gray, but I'm going to start doing it with um, the Space Charger. We'll layer, I'll layer that in, and then you guys will start to see these rocks start to take on a little bit more of a life because they'll they'll have uh, a little bit more identity. So you'll start to see some tone come out of them. Uh, once I get all the base colors in. Oh wow, this really is a quick video. Yeah, these are these are my like half hour painting videos. So they're gonna we're gonna I'm gonna keep doing these types of videos. Um so we can so I can get uh some of this stuff finished and, and finalized because uh as we're going, uh, and like I said, this is the problem when when you when you uh, sometimes do what I do, which is start and stop projects. When you start and stop projects a lot, um, you can run into this issue that I'm running into now with this, which is. Not that it's turning out bad, but it's, um, I could see how it's getting harder to paint it because it, uh, you know, it sat for a minute, things changed on it. The seams, even on this, I think might have actually came apart a little bit. I don't know why, but the, The paint doesn't seem to be applying the same way it was before. I don't know why. Like I, oh, oh man, that almost was really bad. Um, yeah, I don't know. It's just. Yeah, like that space charger gray, it just it seems like it's it's pulling a little bit more. I don't know. I would also say another thing to keep in mind, um, and I had to do this with these, but um make sure you have a good cabinet or case that you keep all your models in, especially stuff that you might be in the process of painting. Um, because you never would think it, but dust is your, not your friend. Um, dust, if, if you start getting dust on top of models, um, especially unpainted models, you know, now the dust becomes a texture on the model that you're painting, unless you, you, you get it off of there. So you want to really be mindful of that, yeah. I'm just going in there, just trying to tidy it up get the edging right on that. I'm 
looks pretty good. Yeah. It'll look good when it's done. I just have to get all of the little finer tuned things. And uh, I always find this this I always find this particular example hard when you're doing basically I'm using all grays. And when you paint with all grays, you have to it's 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 a very interesting color palette because gray, you know, because gray is such a muted color that you have to find good ways to incorporate you know and um create depth and that's that's it's always tough it's always tough when it's when it's when it's gray but that's why i'm leaving those other lines there because i'm going to bring some color into it similar to how i brought the skulls into it as well i'm going to bring uh some color into it and most of this is just all free form I'm not like I said I'm 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 not necessarily basing it off of any um, one version of Thanos I'm, uh, I'm you know I'm basing it off of Yeah, it's not coming out bad. It's just that I'm going to have to play with it a little bit to get the feel and the things that I want to have happen happen. But it's not it's not coming out bad. And like I said, I was all set to to finish these guys, but um the events that I was planning it all it all kind of fell apart once uh once the pandemic hit and you know we weren't uh with the per the with the organization that i was going to be using to uh do the events with you know they couldn't do them anymore because they couldn't have gaming in their in their space um so my uh my plan my wonderful plan to uh to do more with these guys kind of came on a hold um and then I don't know, just uh, GW. Not to say that Mantic hasn't uh, Mantic. Uh, not to say Atomic Mass Games has not come out with new stuff, but they uh, they haven't. So again, if you guys are not familiar with this game, this is um, Marvel Crisis Protocol. Uh, if you were ever dreaming of a world where they made a tabletop miniature game for your favorite Marvel universe, this is exactly what this is. Um, it's actually a lot of fun and. Uh, I'm going to get us back on track for this because uh, we will be doing full battle reports of this on the channel uh, once I get things moving forward. Um, uh, but the idea of this, which is pretty awesome, is that uh, it is, like I said, a miniature uh, game, squad-based miniature game, uh, where you basically draft, uh, you know, create a force of your favorite heroes slash villains um, of the Marvel Universe, and they have quite a bit, lot to uh, choose from now. Um, and you uh, have objectives, and you have to, you know, compete, get points, and win. You have a couple of different, you have a few different rounds of play, um, and then win conditions, you know, for scoring at the end of each round. So, uh, But uh, what I love about this game is kind of two things. I mean, the biggest thing about Marvel Crisis Protocol is that I love that it is a very easy game to get into. Um, the cost ben the cost into the game uh, is very low. You do not have to spend a ton of money um, to get yourself set up with uh, a basic force. Um, you know, most forces are, 
uh, usually around four to five models depending on the characters that you're going to play uh, obviously if you're going to play somebody like like thanos um well actually it's going to depend on how you play thanos because thanos is a unique piece because he can he can he can sort of play in two different modes um one mode it, it, it actually adds a multiplayer aspect to the game if you go that mode if you go his regular mode then you're just playing him as a single character like that um but um it's cool because you don't need that many characters um and why i love this game is because most of the characters um thanos actually is one of the rarer characters of being a pretty expensive more expensive than the average but he's expensive because he comes with a terrain piece and he comes with a whole slew of other special rules and such uh for him um but the majority of the models are going to be between, um, you know, 25 to 30 to 40. Um, and most of the time in those kits, you're actually getting two models uh, for them. Uh, so you're getting two characters per, per pack. There are a few times where you're getting one, uh, like the Hulk would be an example. Um, Venom would be an example. Uh, Green Goblin would be an example. And the reason behind why for those is that their models are a little bit more elaborate, so they're bigger. Um, so therefore, uh, I think Kingpin would be another example. Uh, but they have such a great array of villains and heroes for you to choose from that um, it makes it super duper insane um, for what you can do. So and th and that's what I love about the game. So you can com it, it. You know, I've, I've I've said it to a lot of people. It's like, if you've ever played a game called HeroClix, it's adult HeroClix. That's what I, the best way to describe it. Um, but you can have like I could have Rocket and Thanos on a team. Um, and then uh, I could also incorporate, let's say, Spider Man or whatever. So, um, so your cost into the game is probably going to be around, you know, like between 60 to 100 dollars i mean if you buy 100 dollars and split it with your friend then it's 50 but what i love about this game is they have terrain that they've made for it all terrain is destroyed destructible you can throw terrain at each other you can hit each other with terrain you can do all kinds of crazy stuff so i love that aspect of the game um and i love that um like i said they even in their starter set they include terrain they include 10 minis uh, and it's only $100. So they're very... I uh, like Atomic Mass games because they're very, very similar to how Mantic Games and Kings of War are very into this. They're very big on cost. They want a very small cost in for the game. You can even download the rulebook from their website. So it's, like, very, very um, helpful. It's very, very um, fan, fan appropriate. Um, so yeah, so it's really, really a great game to get into. So I, I apologize that this video was a little wonky. Uh, I will be better tonight um, <laughs> when I'm doing more stuff. Uh, we'll be doing our RPG night. So we'll be picking up our second half of, um, I forget the name of the system, but basically we're playing, we're playing a horror system. Uh, so it's going to be carryover from Halloween. It's still kind of close to Halloween, so it's not going to be bad, but, um, we're going to definitely take a look at that. Um, and then. We will be, um, hopefully I'll be doing a little bit more painting. Uh, I might do some more Marvel Crisis Protocol stuff, or I may jump back into my Warhammer stuff. I don't know. Uh, but please stay tuned. Please check us out. And if you can, please follow us. Uh, if you like the content, you like what you hear, uh, it would be awesome. Uh, and by supporting us, by following us, and also sharing and liking our content, um, you do get us into other areas so other people can expand and enjoy uh, I hope you guys enjoyed the video. I hope it distracted you a little bit from the day-to-day -day of the things. And, of course, as always, please stay safe, wash your hands, and respect all the people of this planet. Because without us all working together, we're never going to figure out the next challenge or next step to what we need to do. Uh, thank you all for watching, as always. And I hope, I hope, I hope to see you soon. Uh, come back, be part of our videos. And, as always, if you could check out the links below, those links are awesome. They get you to some of our other social media. They get us get you to my Patreon and website, some monetary ways to support the channel. Hit that tip button if you also want to be so generous. 
uh, because all of that helps me to get the models, the equipment, and materials that I use to show you all this cool stuff. So please, 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 I hope to see you soon. All right, take care, everybody. Bye-bye.